Well, Reverend Jackson, thank you so much for the opportunity to talk to you. Thank uh, you, sir. How important or what role do you see that students can play in, in creating change, social change? One thing students have today, it didn't have 50 years ago, was the right to vote. We paid the big price for the right to vote. After all, for, for 246 years, African Americans could not vote. And long after that, for women could vote the 23rd Amendment around 1922 or 24. Uh, and so it's, it's one level, it's not the only level. There may be demonstrations and uh, agitation and litigation, legislation, registration, all that matters, but the vote's a big deal. Looking back, uh, what, uh, how crucial was it for students to lead activism back in the 50s and the 60s? Students basically came south and led the drive to end legal apartheid or legal segregation. Right. Uh, and, and for that price, Shrona Goodman and the two Jews and black were killed. For that price, uh, Vala Luizzo, an Italian American mother, a UAW mother right. from, the, from Michigan, was killed. We, we paid the bloody price for ending legal apartheid because there were those so, so vested in keeping us apart. And I found that the people are vested in keeping us apart because they exploit our apartness. Uh, if you plant two seeds in the ground of equal strength, put a wall between them, one will grow taller with multiples of fruit, one will be stunted. It does not mean this one is better, this one is less, it means the one that had photosynthesis and sunshine right. grew. But worse than that, when we were separated by a wall, on the other side of the wall there's ignorance, fear, hatred, and violence. But when the wall comes down, we can see each other anew on the football field. And when the game is over, we shake our hands and we embrace. What allows us to do so well on the field? Relations and talents. Because whenever the playing field is even and the rules are public and the goals are clear, the referees are fair and the score is transparent, we all can get along. Whether it's at U of M or the Olympics, even playing field is a big deal. So one generation fought to end segregation as a matter of law. Another generation fought for the right to vote. So now fighting to reduce student loan debt, student loan debt greater than credit card debt, it costs too much to go to school. Many students with the best minds can't even apply to attend. Students must fight to make sure that the Voting Rights Act remains in force and protected. Right now the Voting Rights Act is in jeopardy because they removed the protected right to vote. They're trying to move the vote off the campuses in North Carolina. We cannot let that happen and so voting matters. Affordable health care, students can fight for that. Fight right in Ann Arbor. It's not enough to come to the University of Michigan and live in your silo. You must learn to live in the real world. University of Missouri became almost the poster child around the country for uh, diversity in higher ed. How important is it? Or they what were, do you think is the They, they were about diverse the on, on the football field, right. not in the classrooms, right. not in the faculty, not in tenured professors. And the football team decided they would not play football unless it was addressed. It was interfering with that economic engine and PR magnet called football. That's what captured the nation's attention. Thank you so much, Reverend. Can, can I say something? Sure. I would think that Dr. King would find a certain joy in this moment. He would urge us in, in the classroom watching this, deep, this taping, you get a classmate with whom you're not comfortable, I mean a, a roommate. Uh, don't, eat, don't eat in your silo. Uh, identify your own ethnic kin, or your own religious group, or your athletic partners. But join the universe, the universitas, the universal community. If you come out of the University of Michigan uh, four years later and you've learned that lesson, you can cope with a challenging world. If you've just learned how to survive in your silo, you live beneath your privilege. So learn to live, share, and grow together. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you, sir. Right. The Reverend Jesse Jackson, founder and president of the Rainbow Push Coalition, America's premier civil rights leader, and Banker Lee Thompson.